President, Bill Close. Thanks, Mr. Hi. President, nice meeting you, sir. Well, nice to see you. Thank you. I guess we get wired up here? Yes, sir. I hear the weather's beautiful out there in the southwest. 81 right? consecutive days without even a trace of rain since January 5th. <clears throat> It may not sound good to everybody out there. Sure sounds good back here. <laughs> you bet. You bet. <clears throat> Mr. President, when did you first know Barry Goldwater? I believe it was 1948 or 49 that I met him. I was introduced to him. I was president of the Screen Actors Guild at the time, and George Murphy, who was a long-time good friend, introduced us. But I didn't really get to know him. Arizona, as you know, was became kind of a second home. Nancy's parents lived there and we were regular visitors and there uh, I met him many times at social gatherings and so forth when we were over there and, and got to know him. When you got to know him initially, really got to know him, have your impressions changed any from then to now? No. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I caused a stir among some of our mutual friends over there at a gathering one night uh, long before 1964 uh, when I said that I thought he ought to be the candidate for president. And uh, nothing had been said about anything of that kind at the, at the time. But no, I, let me tell you some of the things that I knew about him in the 64 campaign with all the rigors of campaigning and all of that. He walked out of the schedule at one point to call on a lady who was terminally ill. And he just said that he felt that she'd like to know someone cared. And he canceled campaigning to do that. I remember uh, during the Vietnam War days when soldiers would come in and uh, not be able to get on airplanes to go on to their home on leaves or something but they would direct them over to a hangar on the other side of the airport where there was a fellow with an airplane and it was Barry Goldwater and he would fly them. Uh, did that day after day. And uh, he's the same Barry Goldwater. Has the senator had any great influence on this country? Oh yes. Yes, and a very great influence that was uh, the thing that must have been heartbreaking for him and the, and a terrible thing, the 1964 campaign when our party divided so uh, greatly and uh, he made that long walk uh, uh, pretty much alone. But I think what has happened to the conservative party, and I call it party, conservative movement, um, which is largely the bulk of the Republican Party, uh, couldn't have happened if he hadn't done what he did. That was the thing that finally uh, brought a kind of a dignity and a respectability and a determination, and particularly to a great many young people at that time. And much of what has happened since, including myself being here, wouldn't have happened had he not done that. What influence does the senator have, in your opinion, on a close vote in the Senate? Oh, uh, I am quite sure uh, there are a number who um, uh, look to him for some guidance uh, on, on voting. Could you detail some of your personal dealings with the senator? Oh, well, I, I don't know just how you, how you mean that. The, uh, uh, we have, as I say, we've had a, certainly a friendly and a social relationship. Um, I got to know him very much during that campaign time because I was one of the two co-chairmen for him in the primary in California. And uh, I'd only been a Republican two years <laughs> at that time. Uh, but um, we, uh, he is, uh, he is a good friend. He's uh, uh, a lot of fun to be with. And uh, you certainly never have to wonder 
where he stands. You find that out. There have been times when Senator Goldwater has taken a stance opposite of yours. Yeah. Um, what does that do to you? Well, I don't think there's going to be any time in the world of politics in which everyone is going to agree with someone else 100% of the time. And uh, when he does, it's something that he believes and believes in. And um, uh, we, we talk about it. And sometimes uh, I've been able to convince him and sometimes not. But uh, there's never anything, anything personal in it. It's, it's just part of the game. And, uh, we take our stands, but it doesn't affect our personal relationship in any way, and there's no grudge at either end of the street. Is Senator Barry Goldwater a predictable man? <laughs> that is the last word <laughs> that I would pick uh, to describe him, unless you take it in the area of knowing that someone will always do what he honestly believes is right. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Mr. President, if you just stay seated for a minute while they take one shot from across the room. Just for oh. a, a wide shot, and then oh. a silent wide shot, and then uh, it'll be true. Some sort of a cutaway, I think they call it. What? A cutaway. <laughs> you know, the many people have forgotten that in the 1960 Republican Convention, some of the conservatives who discovered Barry and all, uh, they were rising up and kind of really uh, threatening a little bit the, uh, the party unity and all. And Barry took the floor. And I've never forgotten one of his lines. He said, conservatives, it's time to grow up. And he made an outstanding pitch for it the course the convention was going, which was not uh, for him. He, he did not at that time have any idea or intention of, of doing that. And they were, this would have been a disruptive influence. And he really stood up there without notes or preparation and uh, talked him back into line. Well, I've had the pleasure of being acquainted with him ever since he was on the Phoenix City Council when I went to Phoenix in 46. Gee, I left out a lot of things there, too. I left out how he, how he probably was the single most responsible reason for uh, the National Guard being integrated in Phoenix, which it had not been. Yes, that's true. His store and his employees, and he, he did all of that. I'll never forget once campaigning for him in the primary in California on a campus and doing Q&A with the students and a black student suddenly stepped forward and yelled a question at me. And it was, you know, what about civil rights and so forth, and a Barry Goldwater and so forth. And I had the pleasure of telling them about this. Well, then limply he said something. That was when those kids had been killed down in Louisiana. And he yelled something about that. And I said,